This is what I had to say the last time I reviewed the Mi Pad. I'm going, I'm going to cut Xiaomi some slack here since this is their first tablet offering and I'm going to hold on to the Mi Pad for a few more months. I believe Xiaomi will fix quite a few of these issues in that time and I will come back and do a second review then. And as promised, here's my second review. So have Xiaomi fix the issues that I, that I was talking about. Is this now a better product than it was when I last reviewed it about 8 months back? Or has it aged badly? Well, that's what we're gonna find out in this video. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, this is C4E Tech and you're watching my second review of the Xiaomi Mi Pad. Let's get started. Generally, I'd start a review with a built-in design, but since this is a second review and built-in design haven't really changed, let's not really get into that. In a nutshell, the Mi Pad has some mild creaking issues, the back's held by two-sided tape, and it remains slippery. Over the last eight months, the back has picked up quite a few scratches, but thanks to its glossy nature, it doesn't show unless you look at it at just the right angle in just the right light. So to any onlooker, it basically still looks new. The 7.9 inch display still remains excellent. It's covered by Gorilla Glass 3 and has a resolution of 1536 by 2048, resulting in a pixel density of 324 pixels per inch. The tiny bit of backlight bleeding I mentioned in my original review still exists. It's not gotten any better, but on the flip side, it hasn't gotten any worse either. As for the performance, the Tegra K1 on the Mi Pad is a very powerful chip. It performed great the last time we saw it, and it's only gotten better. The Mi Pad was rapid fast 8 months back and it's rapid fast today. There's still nothing on the Play Store that the Mi Pad can't run. And not just run, but run smoothly. The scaling issues that I talked about in the last review sadly are still present. Cause like I said then, this is not a common Android resolution, so some games will stretch or let a box to compensate. It's also worth noting that the Mi Pad does tend to get a little hot after intensive gaming. Moving on, this is what I had to say about the camera UI the last time round. The decent hardware here is led on only by a mediocre UI. I can't believe this version of a camera UI made it onto a final product. There's very few controls here and I'm pretty sure Xiaomi will, will come up with an update and add functionality to it, but as of today the camera software is bare bones and dare I say disappointing. Sadly, my predictions turned out to be incorrect. The camera UI remains the same, not fully fledged, but functional. I do honestly feel a few basic features like a countdown timer, HDR, panorama etc could have been included but then again this is a tablet camera and a decent one at that so let's not read too much into this. Now just cause the camera UI isn't feature packed, it doesn't mean that Xiaomi's forgotten about the Mi Pad. To the contrary actually. Xiaomi's kept working on the software, the Mi Pad's regularly received updates, bug fixes and the ilk. It currently runs on Android 4.4.4 with Xiaomi's Mi UI 6 on top. We still have no app draw and separate home screens for widgets and apps. It takes a bit of getting used to, especially if you haven't used a Xiaomi product in the past. But the UI is blazing fast. Everything smooth, apps open up quick without a hint of lag. Multitasking is again great. Fan favorites like the Themes app and the Security app are still missing though. Most importantly, the battery life has improved. The last time we checked, the 6700 mAh battery managed to run a video on a loop for about 11 hours. Now, it lasts almost 13 hours. The battery drain is just as minimal as before, a percentage or two at most overnight. So I guess that's pretty much it guys, I just wanted to give you guys a little update on how it's held up over the course of 8 months. Uh, so, do I mean to say that the Mi Pad is perfect? Of course not. It does have its fair share of quirks that I've mentioned. Are there other tablets that do certain things better than the Mi Pad? Definitely. There are tablets that are, let's say, kings in certain aspects of usage. The Mi Pad in comparison is more like a jack of all trades. Add to that the price factor, 13,999 rupees or about $230, the Mi Pad becomes a must buy at this price. And that is one of the reasons why I remained with the Mi Pad for as long as I have. If you think Xiaomi offers the best price to performance ratios when it comes to phones, when it comes to tablets, it's just a whole new scenario because there just aren't that many competitors. Anything you look at, say for example, uh, Apple with the iPad or Samsung 
with the Galaxy Tab S, uh, Nvidia Tegra Shield tablet, uh, the Nexus 9, all these come close, they do some things better but are much more overpriced in comparison. So what do you guys think? If you are in the market today to pick up a tablet, would you consider giving the Mi Pad a shot? If not, what else would you pick up and why? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for a more in-depth look at the Mi Pad, do check out my original review. I'll leave a link in the description down below and if I could get cards working, I'll have a card on this video. So if you do want to pick one up, if you are from India, you can do that from flipcard.com or if you are from a market where Xiaomi doesn't have a presence, you could pick one up from xiaomiworld.com. I'll leave direct links to both Flipkart and Xiaomi World in the description down below. I'll also leave a discount code for Xiaomi World. So I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, do stay subscribed. If you do have any uh, video requests for me or if you have any feedback, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, Twitter or Google+, any of my social networks. All uh, The direct links to all my ne social networks can also be found right below the like button in the description. I'm most, I'm most active on Twitter these days, just letting you guys know. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ashia from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.